So today's topic is 2.5 function transformations on pages 81 to 92 in your text. Our curriculum outcome, again, is to extend understanding of functions, including algebraic functions, transcendental functions, and piecewise functions, including absolute value. Our lesson objectives is to recall what a horizontal and vertical shift is, a stretch and compression, and what a reflection in the x-axis and y-axis, and what they all do to the graph of a function. And number two, to recall how the equation of a function changes when these transformations are applied to it. So now that we know that what all the normal functions look like from section 2.2, we can now start to apply transformations to the function to move it around and change the shape of it a bit. We spent an awful lot of time doing this in pre-calc 30, so this will act as a bit of a review for you. So the different types of transformations. So first, there's a vertical shift, and that's when you move the entire graph up or down. A horizontal shift is when you're moving the entire graph left and right. A vertical stretch or compression is when you stretch or compress the function upwards or downwards. A horizontal stretch or compression is where you stretch or compress the function in or out. And a reflection in the x-axis is when you switch all the y values in a function. And a reflection in the y-axis is when you switch all the x values in a function. So a normal function is f of x. That means our transform function is a times f of b of x minus c plus d. So remember that the vertical shift is this letter here, the letter d. So if we move uh, the function up, this d is positive when you're moving up. And if we're moving the function down, that d is negative. Horizontal shift is the letter c in this equation. And if it's a negative c inside the brackets, that means that we are moving it to the right. And if we're moving it to the left, that gives you a positive c inside these brackets. A vertical stretch or compression. So a vertical stretch is given by the letter a. So if a happens to be a number greater than 1, then that is a vertical stretch, so go, getting bigger, I guess. And if a happens to be between 0 and 1, so a fraction, then that means that it is getting kind of squashed vertically. Horizontal stretch is this letter b. And this is kind of the opposite. It's going to be stretched out if um, b happens to be between 1 and 0. And it's actually going to be stretched in. I don't know if this little symbol will make any sense, but it'll be squashed inwards if b happens to be a number greater than 1. A reflection in the x-axis. So if we grow, draw a quick little graph here, if you reflect in the x-axis, that means that your y values all switch to become negative. So this is a negative f of x, as opposed to just a regular f of x. And if there's a reflection in the y-axis, that means all your x values have changed, and that's when you have a negative x. So this one here, for the reflection in the x-axis, that is actually the letter a, because it's in front of your function. So a would be negative. And for this one, it would be the letter b, which is going to be negative. Here's our second example. It says the function y equals f of x passes through the points p, q, and r. And here are the coordinates for each of them. And it says find the new coordinates of these points if f of x is transformed as indicated. So it's always nice to organize our information. So we have our three original points. The first one says f of x minus 2 plus 1. So remember anything inside the brackets affects the x. Anything outside affects the y. So this just means that our x value is going to be moved to the right two spots. So that makes that negative 4. That makes this one 14. And that makes this one negative 1. Anything on the outside, we said affects the y value, so that means all our y values are being increased by 1. So we, those are our new points. For our second one, we've got our y values being affected by a factor of 2, and our x values being affected by a factor of 3. But remember that in the brackets, just like here, when it's x minus 2, we moved it to the right 2. When we have 3 times x, we actually divide our x values by 3. So that makes this a negative 2. That makes this one positive uh, 4. And that makes this one negative 1. Now our y values all get increased by a factor of 2, so they all get doubled. So 12 doubled is 24. Negative 9 doubled is negative 18. Negative 3 doubled is negative 6. This one here says that 
it's a negative f of x. So f of x is the same thing as our y value. So if we're saying negative f of x, we're changing the y value to a negative, and then we're going to add 4 to it. So one thing that we've talked about in previous classes is that we always do stretches and reflections first, and then uh, shifts or translations as we called them. So our x values, actually, none of them actually change because there's no numbers here that would indicate a change in our x values. So they stay the same. But the y values get changed to a negative and then added 4. So that now becomes negative 12, and, but if we add 4, that makes it negative 8. This becomes positive 9 plus 4 is positive 13. And this is positive 3 plus 4, which is positive 7. And lastly, we have a number of different things going on here. So we're going to do it in two steps. We're going to start with our stretches first and our um, any sort of uh, flips in the x-axis or the y-axis, reflections. And then we'll do the translation as last. So this half, which is inside by the brackets, means that we're going to um, change all of our x values by a factor of 2. So that means they all get doubled. And that was negative 6, so it's now negative 12. This was 12, it now becomes 24. This was negative 3, it now becomes negative 6. Now our y values all get multiplied by negative 2. So that becomes negative 24. That becomes positive 18. You don't have to write the positive in there though. And that becomes positive 6. So that gets rid of the 2 and the half. Now we can apply our two, our two shifts. So our x's get moved to the left 3, and, move, and our y's get moved down 4. So if we move our x's to the left 3, that becomes negative 15. That becomes 21, and that becomes negative 9. And if we subtract 4 from all our y values, that becomes negative 28. That becomes 14, and that becomes 2. So in summary, there are a number of different transformations that can be applied to a function. So if this is our starting function, where y equals a times f of b x minus c plus d, we know that the d value is your vertical shift. We know that the c value is your horizontal shift. We know that your a value controls two things. It's either a vertical stretch or compression, or it's a reflection in the x-axis because your y value is changing. And finally, your b value is going to be a horizontal stretch or compression, and that's a reflection in the y-axis. So also remember that if you're applying transformations, apply the stretches and reflections first, then do the shifts. So your assignment is on pages 90 to 92. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.